Thank you for joining us for Lesson 4, Love Walk. My name is Brother Leslie Hopkins, and I am joined here with my beautiful, lovely wife of 25 years, 25 years. This is my lovely wife, Sandra. So uh, we're just honored to just be able to minister the word to you today and talk about lesson four again, the love walk, the love walk. Now what I'd like to do is just open up in prayer and we're gonna jump right into this. Father in heaven, we just thank you for another opportunity just to be able to come before your word. We thank you for it's your word that uh, gives us life. It's your word that illuminates us. It's your word that is alive today. And we thank you because it's alive because of Christ Jesus. We thank you for no greater love has a man had that he laid down his life. So we thank you that mm, Christ is the model. Christ is the pinnacle. He is the one who mm, has given us life and life more abundantly. So we thank you uh, just for the opportunity to minister your word today on the love walk. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, if I could give you an analogy when we talk about the love walk and really what um, this, this section is about in our Get Rooted class, it would be one, and Sandra and I, we were discussing it the other day, it would be one of, uh, of a symphony, of a symphony. And when I say a symphony, any of you all, if you've been to a concert, uh, if you've been to a, a, a large venue where they've had a large orchestra, right before that concert or what, right before that performance happens, what you will notice are persons, all of the persons who are how should I say, participating in the event, they are warming up. And when they're warming up, um, you'll hear different sections. You've got the woodwinds, you've got the brass, you've got um, the drums, you've got all different, you've got the cymbals, you've got all different sections that are going to participate warming up. And it does not sound good. It does not sound good because you're like, what is going on here? It actually sounds like confusion and chaos going on. But something that is impressive that happens is that when the conductor, when that conductor steps up to that podium with his baton, when he steps up to that podium with his baton and he signals everyone to get on one accord per se, and he starts conducting and they start playing that music, it's a beautiful sound. It's a beautiful sound. Well, why do I share this? Because what is happening is that they're all harmonizing. When everyone is together, when that conductor is leading, they begin to harmonize and they're in harmony. They're in harmony. And when we talk about the love walk, oh gosh, Sandra and I, again, 25 years we've been together and I can't tell you how important it is that when we put God first in everything in our marriage, when we put him first in every situation, in every circumstance, it's brought about harmony. It's brought about harmony. So as we go into this lesson today, I just wanted to share that analogy of a symphony to you because we want God. We want God in, in, in our marriage. We want God in your, in your, uh, in your life and your relationships. We want God because when he's there, when we've inquired of him and he's there, it's a beautiful thing. It's harmony. So with that being said, um, Sandra, why don't you right. go forth and, and tell us what, what kind of break it down for us about what we're going to be delving into. Okay, the purpose of this Love Walk lesson is to biblically prioritize your life. Um, the Bible always tells us that God is love and we are to walk in love. But in this lesson, we will be learning how to invite God in every areas of our lives, learning to put God first and God and family second and God and the ministry or work third. The results in your life are a pure reflection of your priorities. That's a powerful statement, and that's good. That's a powerful statement. The results in your life or our life are a pure reflection of our priorities. priorities. 
So with that being said, um, and I would encourage you all, we're going to be referring to various scriptures. So go grab your Bible. Go grab your Bible. Like our pastor said, uh, if you're going to go fishing, you're going to need your fishing pole with you. So and he might have said something like that, <laughs> but uh, go grab your Bible because you're definitely going to need it just to uh, have it as a reference point. But the first scripture that we're going to go to um, is going to be Matthew 6 and 33, Matthew 6 and 33. And Sandra and I are going to be going back and forth really between King James Version, King James Version of the Bible, and also probably New Living. Living translation. Yeah, New Living. So Matthew 6.33. Now let me tell you about this, this scripture here. Prior to Sandra and I coming to West Coast Word Church and just sitting under the Word, this Word for several years, we got a hold of this scripture and this is one that kind of revolutionized or really changed the trajectory of our marriage. And I share that because there's, when I read it, it, it almost like it adjusted our spiritual compass. Okay. It adjusted our spiritual compass and turned things right side up for us. So very important passage of scripture when we talk about uh, priorities. Um, and Jesus is teaching here and it says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And I, I want to take a look. I've got a amp parallel Bible um, in my Bible, the Amplified Classic. I just want to read that. I know we say we're going to go back and forth between King James and New Living, but the Amplified Classic, I think, is important that we, we share as well. It says, but seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. I need to repeat that. His way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. So I wanted to share that because when we're talking about seeking first the kingdom, in essence, in saying God has a way of doing and it's being right, a way of doing and being right. And that's that's really what got us turned around, because instead of us seeking, let's say, the world's way, a man's way or our own way, when we lined it up with God's way, it brought about that harmony. It brought about that harmony. Because once again, we want to state the priorities of the believer. God first, God and family second. God and ministry or work third, because no matter what area of life you are dealing with, God needs to be involved if you want to area to thrive and reach its highest potential. Amen. Amen. Now, when when you shared that, Sandra, about God needs to be involved, he, he does. He, yeah. he needs to be involved. He's not going to twist our arms. That's not the way he operates but he's highly recommending that he be involved in these areas and also in that hierarchy per se or, or in, in that order in order for that harmony to take place. But one of the things I just wanted to point out briefly is that the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit Amen. who lives on the inside of us. We have that other, that third person of the Trinity who, who is living and breathing on the inside of us and therefore we have the best teacher. So we want to involve him in all things. We want to involve him in all things. And that way, um, we, we, we bring about things lining up the way they should, the way God wants them to line up. And one major thing, too, though, you have to schedule priorities or they will never happen. Yep, yep. That's, never happen. that's a biggie. That's a biggie. Uh, scheduling, scheduling priorities. I know that I'm a, uh, I'm a checklist kind of guy and I know in order for me to get things done, in order for goals to get accomplished and achieved, if I don't schedule it, if I don't actually write it down on, on my calendar, yeah. chances are it's going to slip by the wayside. So God wants us to prioritize. He wants us to do the same thing, make his lifestyle, our lifestyle, and make it a priority. 
Now, three things that we're going to point out when we talk about priorities, three things in our booklet. Um, there's an acronym called SAT, SAT. And you'll see that the first, um, that acronym S stands for sacrifice, sacrifice. And what it's referring to is we're sacrificing our life and our will, our life and our will. And then the A, the A stands for attitude, and it's referring to the passage of scripture in Isaiah, which says, if we're willing and obedient, then we eat the good of the land if we're willing and obedient. So we've got to have an attitude. We've got to adjust and shift our lens to be willing and obedient for things to happen. And then lastly, time, time. Time is a, a limited commodity in our life and we want to make sure that we take advantage of every second that God has given us. So in summary, um, God enhances everything in our lives when he is invited in. God's not just first place in our hearts, he is in every place of our hearts. Amen. 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 All right. All right. So now let's get into it. Um, the first section per se is God first. Amen. We've got to put God first. Well, we don't have to, but I'm <laughs> highly recommending. To. We're highly recommending. We need to. We're, we're sharing that after 25 years of marriage, it works. <laughs> It works, it, it, we've proven it out, it works. And we're going for 25 more and 25 more. So it works, why? Because we sought first his way of doing and being right and then all these things start to line up. So God first. Because the first step of success in any endeavor of life is choosing to put God first. Amen, amen. So we're gonna take a look at some staple passages of scripture and um, Let's go to Mark. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 12. And I want to take a look at, oh, let's say 29 through 31. Mark, chapter 12, 29 through 31. And I'm coming from King James Version. And in my Bible, it's in red, uh, and we know that red words win because Jesus is teaching here. So verse 29 says, And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And verse 31 says, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So that's one of the, when we talk about putting God first, that's one of the passages of scriptures that we feel as though a staple and we want to take a look at that. So choosing to put God first, God helps us to care of all of our needs. Putting God first is learning his ways as well as his heart. But one of the main agendas of God is definitely love. Um, loving God is number one, but directly after that is loving people. Um, Jesus made sure that there were no gray areas when it came to the, to the matter of love. When you love God first and experience his love through the fruitfulness of his word. Consequently, when we love your, our neighbor as ourselves, we'll truly be able to love them because God has shown you his boundless love towards us, which is the same way that he loves our neighbors. So in essence, to walk in love is to walk like Jesus. Amen, amen. And you, you mentioned that word neighbor. Yes. Uh, sometimes, and I know when I was growing up, I heard that verse or passage of scripture. I'm like, okay, is that the person next door to me? No, that word neighbor, that encompasses all, all people, people, all people that we come in contact with. So uh, for me, I had to expand my lens that God is overreaching. He wants us to be overreaching and, and make sure we connect with all. Um, another staple passage of scripture when we talk about putting God first is in 1 Corinthians 13. 
we've got to go there. Um, I would highly recommend that when we talk about uh, almost like the, the model of, of how God sees love, it's right here in 1 Corinthians 13. And, um, you know, I want to come from New Living Translation. Let me, let me shift. I want to come from New, New Living Translation on this because uh, I just like it sometimes. I just like it. All of God's word is good, but I like it. But I remember, and, and I don't know if you know that I remember, that when we got married, uh, this was a passage of scripture that was read at our, our wedding. I, I remember that. And um, it was eye-opening to me because I, I was um, what I call kind of a scriptural illiterate at the time. <laughs> And thank God for you that you, uh, you, you had knowledge and wisdom in certain areas. But yeah, this is the model. We call this the love chapter. Um, this is how God sees love. And once we understand that, it, it'll allow us to shift. All right, 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm not going to read it all, but I'm just going to pick up um, in verses. I'm going to start with verse 4, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. It endures through every circumstance. And let me go to verse 8. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Love will last forever. And one passage of scripture says, love never fails. Love never fails. So that's the way God sees love. A whole lot different than how the world sees it. A lot of times the world, they see love almost like, I think it's called a um, eros, I believe, mm -hmm. that affectionate, um, touchy-feely type. Yeah. No, 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 God doesn't see it. This, that he's, love is patient and kind. Mm -hmm. uh, love is not jealous. It's not proud. So um, again, I would highly recommend that you kind of highlight that in your, in your Bible. And every time you want to know what God thinks about a situation, how to respond in love, there it is. That's it right there. So we can firmly say that love never fails. So putting God anywhere but first would definitely end in failure. Can we firmly say that? We can say that. We can and say we can that. say also that our identity is found in our relationship with God. Because a relationship without fellowship is a sinking ship, correct? That's correct. Uh, that was one of the bulleted, uh, highlighted okay. parts in, in, in our workbook here. Uh, and I have to always refer back to Pastor Aaron uh, and his teaching because it's just been a blessing for both of us. But we hear that word fellowship, fellowship. Well, what does that mean? He said, it's two fellows in a ship. It's simply two <laughs> fellows in a ship. So you got two fellows in a ship. If they're not getting along with each other, then that boat or that ship is not going to sail in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So fellowship is important or it is a sinking ship. Um, if I could go to one other passage of uh, scripture uh, when we talk about love, 1 John 4 and 8, and I'll just stay right here in New Living. 1 John 4 and 8. And it reads, 1 John 4 and 8 says, But anyone who does not love does not know God. Amen. Why? Because God is love. Amen. The two cannot separate. They, 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 they are they're stuck like Chuck together in essence. Yeah. God is love. Love is God. So it's just so important, a landmark passage of Scripture as well. I would recommend you highlight that as well. Stay tuned for part two.